So thank you all, and uh, Raj, uh, everybody, Gary, Kevin. I was actually at the very first QS meeting. So how many people were here? The very first <laughs> Not many. So you all are all newbies, and you're sitting there going, whoa, what is this? Um, Anyway, I'm going to tell you about, uh, I've run a lot of experiments. I'm a journalist. I, I write for uh, Fortune and the New York Times, a uh, show on public radio, et cetera. And at one of my styles of reporting is to do crazy experiments in the quantified self space. So this is one of the crazier ones I've done. And in fact, it's one of the more freakish ones I've done. And I wish I brought a Mambo band in here. I didn't think of that until I arrived here. But next time I give a talk, you'll actually be hearing music. So what I'm going to tell you about is these cells right here. And these cells, if you look at them, they're actually beating, they're throbbing. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, these are my heart cells. And that's the only clue I'm gonna give you right now. There was no surgery involved, nothing invasive, but those are my heart cells. And I'm gonna tell you how they ended up on there and what relevance this has to quantified self. It's actually part of a large project I've been working on. It's hard to believe. I, I wrote this first story on this almost 10 years ago for Wired Magazine. It's called the Experimental Man Project. And in this, in this project, I've literally had thousands of tests, hundreds of labs and companies all over the world. Uh, I had my full genome sequence, uh, billions of nucleotides, thousands and thousands of traits identified. And it hasn't changed my life, but that's another talk. Um, <laughs> Hundreds of environmental toxins, pesticides, mercury, lots of stuff like that. We've even spun off a company on that, which I also am not going to tell you about right here, but I'm happy to tell you about later. Uh, hours and hours and hours in scanners. Basically, the idea of the Experimental Man Project was to go out and take every test possible, to basically test drive everything. And it did start with a Wired story many years ago where I went out and had my self genotype, my, my genes tested. And it's as a writer, it's a way to tell a story, and it's a way to humanize a story. So that's continuing in this process here. Uh, I've also had my proteome scan, all the little microbes in my gut and other parts of my body. It just goes on and on and on. And it is in this book called Experimental Man, which I obviously hope that everyone goes home and buys. Uh, you can get also some great information on experimentalman.com. So I'm here to tell you about uh, doing a few tests beyond the book, and it's only things that are really crazy. <laughs> um, this one's pretty crazy. This is around stem cell technology. And I'm sure you all have at least a vague awareness of, of what stem cells are. Uh, embryonic stem cells are those very special cells that appear a few days after conception in the womb, and they grow into any cell in the body. And there's been a lot of controversy about them because the only way to really access them for therapy, for research, is to harvest them and kill the, uh, the fetus. And obviously a few people out there don't like that. It's been a big political problem. Uh, but that's not actually the type of stem cells I'm going to tell you about. Um, I'm going to tell you about something called induced pluripotent stem cells. And biologists have terrible names. I'm sorry, induced pluripotent stem cells. What that means is that they can take any cell in your body, blood cell, skin cell, and reverse it back to being very close to what it was like in those first few days of your life uh, in embryonic stem cells. So I'm going to tell you here, I'm going to divide the talk up into four little sections here. Uh, how are my heart cells created? Those things you saw beating there. How did we actually get there from stem cells? Uh, what is IPS, induced pluripotent stem cell technology? What does that even mean? Um, how do you use these things for quantifying oneself? In other words, what good are they to you and me? And that's pretty much a requirement for the whole Experimental Man Project. What's in it for me? And I'm standing in for you. I'm not being selfish about that. It's kind of what's in it for all of us. Uh, part four is going to be future uses, including regeneration. All right. You can read about this. This is a very short talk here, but uh, you can check it out in Technology Review. I wrote a story on this, uh, I guess, a couple months ago. Uh, we also have a website, a micro site, on the Technology Review site, technologyreview.com. And it has all kinds of cool stuff on here, um, videos and slideshows and all the rest. So part one, how are these heart cells created? Um, this is a little diagram of you started with blood cells. I literally, I had some blood removed, actually just a clinic nearby here. Um, you harvested out white blood cells. You reprogrammed them. And this is the amazing thing about this technology. It's only about four years old. 
this technology, but basically with some very simple alterations to any cell in the body, you can trick it back into thinking it is in that early stage of development. And the guy who did this, who you'll see a picture of in a second, will certainly win a Nobel Prize. He also is the same guy that just characterized stem cells uh, originally, embryonic stem cells back in the late 90s. Anyway, we create a stem cell line. Uh, you then take that line, and now you've got these pluripotent cells, which will turn into any kind of cell. And through some more genetic manipulation and chemical manipulation, you then create cardiomyocytes. And here's what it literally looked like for me. That's my blood. And right after it was drawn by the phlebotomist, uh, we sent it up to Madison, Wisconsin, which is where um, that scientist I was just telling you about uh, has his headquarters at the University of Wisconsin. Um, his name is Jamie Thompson, by the way. That's him right there. And he started a company called Cellular Dynamics International. And they're the guys who ran all these crazy tests for me. And that was him in Time Magazine and his original discovery. So the journey continues here. We created the stem cell line. That's actually my stem cell line. And I, even, I don't have my computer here, but I actually have it as my wallpaper. Uh, <laughs> that's me, as I say. Um, and so that's frozen still up there. And one day, by the way, everyone may have these. It may just be a normal thing that we all have. Because then you can grow any cell you want. And in this case, it was heart cells. So two, part two here. What is IPS cell technology? What's it used for? And at the moment, it's mostly for research. Uh, this is so new that there's still some anomalies, there's some mutations, some problems in reversing those cells back, which make it difficult for things like, say, uh, transplantation of tissue if you wanted to repair a heart with these cells. You still can't really do that. Uh, things like cancer occur because of some of these mutations. But they're beginning to work some of that out. But at the moment, CDI, this company, which is actually uh, just was named Wall Street Journal's innovation, innovative, most innovative company of the year. Uh, I ran into the CEO on a plane two days ago, and he goes, look, look, we got it, we won. Um, but it's, it's sold, so CDI sells these heart cells to, to research labs, to uh, pharmaceutical companies to run tests on. And you also have some applications to personalize health and medicine. You can use these for diagnostic uses, to test drug side effects. Uh, and genetics, and I'll explain those in a sec. Uh, part three here, using IPS cell technology for quantifying oneself. Okay, this is where the you know pedal hits the metal here for this group. Um, we ran three, actually we ran several experiments. I'm going to share three with you. Uh, experiment number one, what they ran up at CDI was, are these actually heart cells? And that may seem rather simplistic, but when you're you know mucking around and the genetics and, re and altering cells, you first of all have to make sure that it's actually what you set out to, to make. And I pass out with flying colors, at least my cells did. So yes, they were actually heart cells. So experiment number two, are my heart cells healthy? In other words, are they like the ones that are inside of me? You know, presumably, at least hopefully, they are healthy. I seem to be fine, at least according to my last checkup. Um, so are they healthy? And they, I wish I had more time because I could actually show you what all these experiments are. So it's really an elaborate battery of tests that have to do um, you know, with, with basically frying them with electricity, with you know, all kinds of uh, chemicals that are added just to make sure. And, but the ultimate was yes, they are healthy. So we have healthy cells that are actual heart cells. Then we did a series of experiments uh, testing uh, toxic agents against these cells. And this is what drug companies do all the time when they're starting out with drug candidates. They'll take a cell, like a heart cell, um, and they'll run drug candidates over them. And the first thing they have to figure out, and heart cells are very important because a lot of, a lot of drugs fail all down the line because of heart problems and, and cells. And that's, so that's why they, uh, the company started selling heart cells first. Anyway, uh, this is experiment number three. Are there dangerous side effects for me for drugs? And one of the drugs that we tested was Gleevec which uh, is a treatment for cancer, for leukemia, and some other cancers. And they literally run a tox screen on my own heart cells. I don't have cancer, thank God. But if I ever did, this could actually be used, and it's starting to be used experimentally with some oncologists, where they will actually create a stem cell line like mine, and they will create heart cells, and they will test different cancer drugs to see which one might work best. So you're already beginning to see where this might have some very, very interesting uses uh, for something like cancer and maybe some other diseases. 
So this is what Gleevec looks like, pill form. And those are my heart cells. And the results of this experiment, normal. I'm just so normal, it's really boring. Um, although we did find a few things in experimental man that were interesting. Um, basically, it beat up my cells, which is what it was supposed to do. Uh, the, the cancer drugs are notoriously very, very hard uh, on cells, especially heart cells. So it was a normal response that it should have been. Um, that's the, the data represented in charts. And you can see when the Gleevec hit certain doses, it just started really changing everything. Uh, to do with the heart, the, the, the pulse rate, uh, the uh, elect electrical uh, aspects of the heart, and lots of other things. So, future uses. Um, there are 208 human cell types. So heart cells are only one of them. And so I've only had one out of 208. So where are the other 207? That's what I actually asked the CEO the other day. And they just started marketing brain and liver cells. I mean, is this a little weird to you guys? <laughs> They're selling, they're like, in fact, I wrote, my first piece I wrote on this was emailing, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, heart cells through the mail. You know, you order them, they send you brain cells through the mail. It's a little weird. Um, anyway, they are going to run uh, a, some brain cells and liver cells for me, which I'm, I'm quite excited about, partly because it allows me to run another experiment, which actually was my original idea for the story, uh, which is, should I take statins? Statins are drugs, as you all probably know, that lower cholesterol. Uh, I have borderline cholesterol. Statins are probably in my future. But I have a little problem. Um, since I've been heavily genotyped, I know that I have a genetic risk factor for a side effect for taking certain types of statins, uh, myopathy, which is muscle weakness. And about 2% of people who take statins get myopathy. And it's related to this particular gene. Now, one way that stem cell technology can be used is to uh, make a cell line, create these heart cells, and uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's liver cells. That's why we haven't tested it yet. You create liver cells because the enzyme that works, uh, that, that causes this side effect actually is in the liver. So you create a liver cell, and you could actually test this drug on the liver cell or test the mechanisms to see if, in fact, I have that um, problem and that I will get my apathy because the genetic test you take, say 23andMe or something, it's only a risk factor. You may or may not actually get it. So this could confirm that. And you know, is it real for me? So the final future use here that I'll share with you, young Frankenstein, uh, is regeneration. And that actually is a whole other talk. But uh, that's the exciting thing. As I said, we're a long way from that still. Uh, although not as long as we were using IPS technology where you might, everybody has a cell line and you have a little problem maybe in your spine or in your heart or your brain and you introduce these cells and, and it regenerates. And let me just run one more time my favorite movie. <laughs> there you go. If you want to take questions, you can Sure. Am I over? Oh, sorry. Okay. Anyway, there's some uh, email addresses and websites. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, Roger. Okay. Okay. Good question. Um, back when I did most of the testing in 2008 um, for the book, it was around $150,000 if I had paid for everything. I mean, because I'm a journalist and I was writing for ma major publications, I got most of it done pro bono. Uh, curiously enough, though, it would cost probably about a third of that now because a lot of these technologies, especially sequencing, gene sequencing, is coming down very rapidly right now. Still not exactly something that everyone can do. Uh, the stem cell test itself uh, is probably, I think it was seven or eight thousand dollars to create the stem cell line and only a couple hundred dollars to do this, the heart cells. So not, not that bad, yeah. Um, one of the things I find different from uh, your thing is uh, that you often obviously contract out your experiments and I'm wondering how would you contrast paying someone else to find the answer for you as opposed to doing the experiment yourself and trying to find out that answer. And how would that learning process differ? You mean like that do it yourself? So imagine you ran all these lab experiments. Do you think you'd pay attention to different things in the sense that would you take away a greater message? Would you well, I think when you do things yourself, you, 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 know, you, you always get more out of it. In fact, you know, like I said, we spun a company off, which is still 
more or less in self mode, but it, it has to do with uh, genetic risk factors for environmental toxins. And definitely, you know, we're working, I'm right there with the scientists, and that's a much different experience for sure. Um, but, you know, most of these I can't run myself. You know, I don't have the knowledge, uh, I don't have the technology myself available. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, part of what this is all about is participating. And I try to get in as much as I, that's how I do journalism. You know, whether I'm you know, writing a political story or whatever, I try to get in as much as you can because that's how you learn. That's, that's how you really understand a story. I mean, I, I just, I try to be an observer, but it's very hard for me. So why don't we stop it there? I mean, we could have a whole evening of Dave's talk. It's actually very kind of him to fit the format. But as he pointed out, there, there's some websites, enormous amount of information, and of course, buy his book. Yeah. I'll be around to give him a